a married couple, friends of mine, tried for the longest time to have a child. It wasn't happening. She had several miscarriages and was almost inconsolable. You see, not only was she unable to conceive, but she and her husband had to consider moving. Why? Well, an act as simple as an evening walk would make them something akin to criminals. Uh, if not criminals, then lepers. Quietly undesirable. You see, neighbors with children, and that was all of the neighbors, they didn't seem to want to have anything to do with a barren couple. It was painfully obvious. It was almost as if they were afraid of their own children being kidnapped. Eventually, my friends adopted a baby boy and did things change. It was suddenly as if they were on everybody's Christmas card list. My friends felt good about that, but not about how they got there. They moved anyway. Recently, I've been thinking about these friends of mine a lot. Why was I doing this? I mean, I always liked kids. I just never seriously imagined my own personal stab at a possibly dysfunctional family. Was I feeling pressure somehow? Was I feeling the need to fit in? Did I, did I feel like I had to prove that I was complete? I called my sister. She was the one person I thought would understand. Hello? Hello, Marzipan. Hi, Tom. My life is hell. How are you? Your life is hell. My life is always hell, and you know this, and it's not the best time for my 12-year-old baby. OK. What's going I, on? I want to know why your life is hell. You want? Tom, I'd have to go back 20 plus years for that one. Um, Where's this going? Okay, okay. Well, I, I, I was hoping that this would be a happier time, is all. Yeah, well, I was hoping my life would be a happier time. <laughs> well, I'm calling with with what I think is, is, is good news. You're divorcing Brad. No. Oh, sorry. Marlene. Oh, come on. You know I'm on overdrive right now, Tom. But believe it or not, this is me being engaged. I'm here, listen. Uh, all right, now, come on. What's wrong? What's wrong? Come on, you can tell me. Say you, say me, say it together. Tom, are you never not gay for like two minutes? <laughs> uh, you mean without aversion therapy? <laughs> Tom, you didn't dial this number at random. I'm your sister. What's going on? Okay. Well, <clears throat> all right. No, wait a minute. No, you go first. You tell me. You're, you are not always like this. Look, I call you plenty of times, and you are absolutely fine. Now, what is it? Yeah, well, that would tend to be when I'm sitting in my comfy chair with a silent phone, a large glass of Merlot. <laughs> And a good book. That would tend to resemble me on a walking trip. Well, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry, Tom. You didn't do anything. Okay, now, come on. What's going on? Well, um, Brad and I were thinking of adopting. A dog? No! That's not a dog. 
Illuminati, and, and we were, and I guess we are, thinking of a, a child. And you guess you are. No, 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 we, we are, we, we are. Hello? Uh, well, why not? Was that rhetorical? <laughs> no, that was not rhetorical. Would you stop that? What it is, it is complicated. Oh, God, Tom, the last time you called me with complicated, you didn't need me. You needed Maury Povich. If I couldn't help you then with Brad's self-hatred, what makes you think I could possibly help you with parenting? Look, well, I'm not asking you for advice. And he is beyond all that self-hating stuff. <coughs> hey, he is. OK, I didn't say anything. And that is why I think we can do this. Do what exactly? Uh, Co-parent. Co-parent? Who's the lucky girl? She's a really good friend of mine, you know? And she really wants to be a mother while she still can. Y you know, the uh, ticking clock. Oh, is she straight? No. Wow, interesting. Go on. Uh, OK, well, um, I've spoken with Brad about Stephanie several times, and he's interested. I mean, the idea appeals to him. His, his, his ex won't let him see his kids, and he misses being a father. So. Okay, the way we would do this... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where babies come from, Tom. Uh, no, I mean the sperm. Oh, yeah, well, the sperm would enter into it. <laughs> well, it would be his. Brad's. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I've gone to one of those, you know, um, considering parenthood seminars, they are great. They are so helpful. They give you, uh, they answer all your questions. They give you all this reading material. Hey, hey, did Brad go with you? Uh, well, no, he's busy. Oh, the sperm was busy. <laughs> so what were you going to do, Tom? Write up a book report for the sperm to read? And where was mommy? Okay, okay, okay. We do not have to do this. Are you kidding? I'm riveted. Carlene? Yeah? I'm going to tell you something. OK. I'll wait for the punchline. People change. That's the punchline? Uh, well, your life is a mess. <laughs> it's that, that that's what you tend to say all the time. And, and all that means, means is that things can go either way, no matter what. I, I, I never said this, but I. I'm sorry about the way things turned out for you and, and Peter. So now you're talking about my well-kept house of cards. Now, I just remember how much in love the two of you were. I, I remember, do you remember your wedding day? Uh, yeah, I remember, vaguely. <laughs> I was shit-faced. <laughs> I remember feeling so awful that day. I should have known that. I felt like I was losing my lifeline. I mean, you were my best friend. I, Marlene, I am the proud gay man I am today because of you. You, you. you would give up friends who were homophobes. Well, you know, you find out who your real friends are. Yeah, well, they weren't my friends. Yeah, well, you were my little brother. And I loved you. I know. And I'm sorry for yelling. I know. It's just that you can just be so irritating, Tom. Oh. You were very supportive. And then. What? And then you weren't. Supportive? No, my best friend. That's not fair. <laughs> not in the same way. And that's, that, that's just the way these things go. You know, two people fall in love and the, the rest of the world just goes away. This, this whole other thing happens. You're right. You know, you're right, this whole other thing happens, and that's why you need to think about this whole other thing. What does that mean? Uh, 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 uh. That means Brad, it doesn't mean. Look, it's even hard for me. No, 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 please, 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 talk about it. Uh, okay, listen, you are militantly gay, and you should be, you need to be, I love that. You know, you're out there organizing committees, you're on the uh, front line for social
social change. All this is good stuff. And, and then there's Brad, and he is part of that social change. Yeah, but well, really, Tom? I thought he was your husband. Hey, look, it, I'm not trying to rain on your personal parade here. And the issue is not about gay people having children. You know, the world is hemorrhaging with people who should not have children, or a driver's license for that matter, or access to a computer, or possibly <laughs> even food stamps. Okay, uh, moving right along. Don't you remember telling me that a child can bring two people closer together? It has that potential. Oh, God, yeah. Before I realized that, you know, they can rip your heart out and tear you apart from the people you love the most. That didn't happen until now. And besides, you had two. You only want one. Oh, God, Tom. By the second one, you're on remote. You don't even recognize yourself in the mirror. Oh, God. When did you turn into the old me? What? Being so negative. God, it's getting worse, Marlene. You know, you know, the only thing that's different is that you don't actually come out and say, it sucks. Remember, remember, you, you always used to get on my case when I talked like that all the time. And you said, you said, oh, Tom, it sucks. It sucks. It changed that attitude. You can't okay, go so through true. life looking, looking for, for things, things to suck. Although you did, and you did it well. <laughs> <laughs> So, Stephanie wants to be a mom, and Brad wants to be a dad, again. Yes. What do you want, Tom? You know, this isn't one of your committees. You cannot organize something like this. You need to know what you want, and so do they. Then at least you stand a better chance of getting what you want. God, you know, I used to think responsibility was just up to me. And you know what? It is. Hey, hold on. I got another call. Okay. Hello? What do you mean, who is this? <laughs> it's your mother. Boy, you must have hit redial, honey. Oh my gosh, are you still upset about this? All right, let me see if I got this straight. So you wished him happy birthday on his Facebook page. And so did 50 other people. And he clicked like on everybody's comments but yours. I mean, honey, that's not necessarily dripping with subtext here. I mean, he's your boyfriend. I mean, doesn't he know the life path's already taken care of? Yes, I know, I know. Listen, you know I'm not the right person here to come to for affairs of the heart. I've got one strict rule for those, and it's called common sense. You know, I got your uncle on the other line right now, and you want to talk about drama. <laughs> Okay, I'll call you back, okay? I'll call you back later. I gotta go. Tom, you there? Tom? Yeah, hi, honey. <laughs> okay, well, that was my baby. <laughs> and her sky has fallen again for the hundredth time today. But you know what? By all means, have a baby, have a dozen. sense. Well, I'll call you later. 